Hello and welcome to my channel. Really quickly, I'm going to actually provide you guys with a tutorial on the Mac OS. So if you're a beginner and you've never used Mac OS and you like Windows, go ahead and watch. It should give you the basics. It's just really basics, but it's going to get you past maybe your first couple of days of using it. And also, if you like what you see, please support my channel by subscribing because I'm trying to grow my channel and I'll make many more of these videos in the future. So enjoy the tutorial. Thanks. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you everyone how to use Mac OS. This is really for beginners, so if you just got a Mac computer and you're used to Windows, maybe this will help you. Or if you got a job where you have to use a Mac and you have no idea how to use that, this is going to be a great demo on how to do that. I'm just going to kind of continue through it so it's going to be a little bit rough and I won't try to cut too much in it. Just keep, uh, you know, obviously keep that in mind when you're listening. So. Once, you know, I'm just going to basically get right into it. I'm going to go over the basic features of using the Mac OS. So basically, once you log in, this is the desktop, just like a Windows desktop. And I'm going to start going through about, I would say, about 20 different features that are going to actually help you use this computer. So in the upper left-hand corner up here, you're going to notice that there's an Apple icon. And if you can see it up here, if you click on that Apple icon, the first thing I'm going to cover here is the system preferences. So if you click on this, this is actually going to be very close to your control panel in Windows. And you can see in here, some of these things are self-explanatory. But for the most part, you know, obviously some of them may not be either. Um, but for the most part, basically, if you click on them, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, the displays is actually where you can change the brightness of your screen, just in case you want to do that. So that's pretty easy. These arrows here are going to be able to go back and forth between the screen I was just on and the, and the screen that we're going to. Um, Obviously, there's keyboard settings, mouse sensitivity settings. So again, this is very much like a control panel. You can change the tracking speed, and you can actually click back here, and you'll be back to your preferences. I'm going to go through a lot more of these preferences a little bit later, but I just wanted to show you where they were right now, just in case, you know, obviously, you know, you want to change anything from, you know, the, the screensaver you can change right here. Um, a lot of people like to do that in case they uh, leave the computer alone and don't, don't want burning in the screen and stuff like that. So so anyways, that's preferences. Um, and I'm going to go through a whole bunch of other things here in a second, but we'll kind of go down the list. The very first thing that you want to do most likely is going to be connect to Wi-Fi. So this is obviously another similarity to Windows where you can actually... Windows, it's usually down here in the lower right, but in this case, it's going to be up in the upper right-hand corner. It's the same kind of an icon. It looks kind of like a Wi-Fi icon up here. If you select that, it's going to let you select from a whole bunch of different, um, obviously, if you look for your Wi-Fi name, you click on it, you put in your password, and you'll connect just like you would in any win Windows machine. But I would do that first just so you have internet connectivity. All righty. So kind of as we, we kind of come down the list here, let me see what else we can go through. Um, oh, yeah. Over here in the upper left-hand corner, let's go back to the Apple icon. If you click on this again, uh, I'm going to kind of go through these things here just so you can get used to them pretty quickly. About this Mac, basically, it's not that important for someone that's just starting out, but it does give you the OS level, the Mac OS. This is High Sierra, and it gives you the version in case you're having version problems. And it does tell you what the specifications of your computer are, and plus including like how much RAM you have and things like that. Um, and again, you can kind of go down the list. It'll show you your display settings, your storage settings, you know, memory. Um, but that's something that's good to have just in case you need it. Basically, again, and if you click on the Apple icon again, uh, force quit is kind of like a uh, an alternate delete in, in, a, uh, <laughs> in a Windows computer where you can actually force quit applications that maybe freeze up. So that's something good to know as well. And then down here, you have these other things, basically, that, you you know, in Windows, they'll be in the lower left-hand corner. But you can put your computer to sleep by clicking this button here. You can restart your computer, and then you can shut it down, which, obviously, that's how you shut down the computer. All right. So that's basically, you know, the Apple icon, you know, very quickly, but it should give you some basics there. All right. Some other basics that you might want to know about is just the volume controls uh, when you're going to be listening to videos and things like that. That's going to be in the upper right-hand corner. You can get to it through the preferences as well, which I showed you earlier, but it's just the slider bar here. Again, in Windows, it's way down here in the, in the lower right-hand corner, so just keep that in mind. Um, I'm also connected to an external mic, which you can connect to different mic mics uh, here as well and speakers. Um, actually, speakers, I'm sorry, um, and then your sound preferences. So. So that's basically, you know, kind of going through this list. I'm going to try to hit these little features here and there. I'm mean, not in any particular order because some of these are a lot more important than others. So just keep that in mind. If you continue to be up here in the upper right-hand corner, this icon over here that's kind of got some color to it, this is going to be the Siri icon. 
So if I click on that and I say something. Interesting question, Craig. You'll see that it actually uh, will try to answer my question. So um, that's how you get to Siri. This little magnifying glass here, this is a, called a spotlight. And if you click on that, mine's way down here now, but I'll move it back up. You can kind of move this little bar around. This is your spotlight search. Inside of here, you can get to various things like your calculator. Um, let me just go ahead. I have a microphone in front of me, but you can pipe in calculator and it'll bring up your calculator. Um, so you can basically search for files through this thing. You can search for um, weather, uh, anything basically that you would want on your system, including, like I said, outside stuff like weather, um, Twitter, di different websites, things like that. And uh, it'll actually find them for you. So that's uh, another thing that's really good for the system. It's, it's, it's up here called Spotlight. Just remember that that's there. Start fooling around with it. It finds like flight information and everything else. You can kind of fool around with that as you need to. So um, that's the only way to learn that. The next thing is the time and date. Obviously, you can click on this and you can view it as different ways and you can actually open your time and preferences and change the time if it's incorrect. <clears throat> so that's basically the upper right hand corner, except I guess there's one other icon way in the far right. It's basically going to bring in your alerts. So if you click on this, you'll see that it brings in some alerts from the right. And this is going to be like stock quotes. You can actually have your calendar events, weather if you set up your location, which I have not, and any schedule events for tomorrow. So just keep that in mind. That's up in the upper right hand corner too. this icon here. All righty, so let's see here. Um, just starting with the basics, one of the most important things to, to know here is called Finder. So down here along the bottom are going to be some icons. And like Windows, you know, obviously in Windows they allow you to put icons at the very bottom of the screen. And down there you can actually um, click on icons that are basically, you know, on your desktop. So this is a good way of putting them on your desktop without having them cluttering your entire screen. So these are all, bas it's basically a launch pad down here, more or less. Um, although you do have a launch pad here, which I'll get into. So, um, But basically, here's the first one over here that looks like a little person. It's called Finder. And this is where you can find all your files from. So if you click on this, it's going to bring up a, a program that looks like this. And the way the Mac works is basically it'll show you recent files that you've actually worked on or actually um, been kind of opening or closing recently. But also it shows you your Documents folder if you click on Documents and it'll show you downloads in case you download stuff. So basically this screen, any files that you set up folders on or if you actually are downloading information and things like that, you can go into Finder here, click on it, and this is how you can drill down basically like, uh, again, a Windows control panel, uh, you know, where you drill in through the, the different windows. You can actually do the same thing here. Um, if you have files on the desktop, they'll show up here. All your documents, again, your downloads. Um, and just basically it's a great way to keep track of all your information. And you can kind of fool around with all the little icons up here. It rearranges this. You can sort by size and various things like that as well. Um, so just keep that in mind that that's one thing that's uh, very useful. It's called Finder. The next thing, actually, I'll, I'll kind of um, take a step back because I want to go over a couple other things. I guess we'll we'll get into this next icon first, and then we'll kind of then we'll start taking a step back to to just showing you some basic functions on how to open and close windows. But first thing I want to show you is Launchpad. So obviously, like I mentioned earlier, you can click on these icons down here uh, to open these programs, and if you mouse over them, it'll actually tell you what the programs are. But this first one's called Launchpad. It looks like a rocket ship. If you click that. All your programs should be in here as well. So in this, you know, obviously they're going to be down here, which you can actually drag them down here if you want to have them always visible. But for if you have a lot of programs and the ones that are kind of hidden away, you click Launchpad here. And once you click that, it'll open up all your programs. You can do a search up here for the programs. There's a search bar. If there's more than one screen, there'll be some like, like little dots here, and you can scroll between the different screens. But it's basically this will open up all your programs, and you can actually just click on one like that and this is the mapping program and it'll open it up so basically that's super easy but that's obviously launchpad and launchpad if you can think of it launches all of your applications um, even if they're not down in this window uh, let me go ahead and just close out of this so basically another thing for launchpad if i'll open that back up you know down in this bar you have a number of icons obviously but if you have something in launchpad that you want down here that's always visible so that you can basically you know, always click on it very easily without having to open Launchpad. You can click on a program. This is a graphics program. Don't worry about it. And you can actually just drag it into this little thing here and see now it's down here. So to get out of Launchpad, you just click in this area that has nothing. It'll remove Launchpad. 
And then obviously here's the icon here, and you'll see it sitting in this, this carousel down here. Um, if you don't want it in here anymore, you know, you can actually do a couple of things. I just launched it by clicking on it. Um, obviously that's how you launch applications. But you can remove that as well, which we'll get into in a little while. But for now, let me go ahead and get out of this program that I launched. And uh, we'll go ahead and take care of that right now. And I'll go through that, how to get out of there in a second. So um, anyway, so there, there's the, the icon in the program that I just added down here. So, and as you can see, it extended this whole thing down here. Um, so one thing I wanted to show you, so Safari is the built-in browser. I recommend downloading Chrome, which I'll show you in a second. But Safari is the built-in browser that comes with, you know, Mac OS. It's their uh, Apple browser. So I'm going to open that. So I click on it, obviously, and you'll see that it basically opens up and it has some icons of some recently visited websites. If I click on the Google icon, it'll take me to Google, and I can basically come down here. I can drag and kind of like Windows, I can drag a window like this and make it bigger. If I click on the top bar up here, I can slide the window around. But the one thing that's quite different is, you know, in Windows, all of your icons are over here to close and to minimize windows and to expand windows and things like that. On the Mac, they're all over here on the left side. And it's kind of similar, obviously. If you mouse over them, you'll see there's an X there. This is to minimize it and this is to extend it to a full screen. So let me go ahead and show you a couple things. So if I minimize it, I'll press the yellow, you'll see that it goes down here. Now it's gonna go down into this little area down here, and this is kind of like a place that holds open programs. So I can click on that again, and it'll open right back up, and it's, you know, I never close it, I just minimized it. It goes right down here, and I can click it right back open. To actually expand it fully, I want to click that icon. And if you notice, when I did that, everything on my screen went away, including my icons down here and including the bar at the top. So what do I do to get out of here? Now I have a full screen in a browser, and I don't know how to get out of here. All you have to do is drag your mouse here all the way to the top, hold it, and then basically these, these things will come back, these icons up here. And I'll show you this in a second, but more or less, when you're in a program, this top bar will actually be the program that you're in. So for instance, I'm in Safari, and this is why it says Safari. This is, don't, don't click on the Apple, but click on Safari, and then quit Safari here, and it'll actually close the program Safari. You'll notice it's, not, no, it's no longer down here, and it's basically not here. It's closed completely. So that's something good to know. The other thing, like I said, is, and I'll show you how to download additional programs soon, but I downloaded Chrome, it's another great browser. I mean, obviously you can use Safari. I'm gonna click on it. If you notice a couple things, same thing, I can minimize it. It's gonna go down here very easily. I can obviously maximize it, and then basically it'll go away. This, this top bar goes away, but then you have to kind of mouse over it and it'll come back to close it. But if you notice, see how it says Chrome up here? Because Chrome is open right now, or it's the window that I've actually selected. If I actually minimize this, you know, and I click on the screen, the desktop, it says find, this is the, the this is your standard uh, menu up here. So there's no longer Chrome up there. Um, it's important to know that, you know, I can go ahead and if I open up Chrome, for example, I can also close it, obviously, I can close it with this little red X here. I'm gonna close it right now. But if you notice, look down here. If you notice there's a little dot underneath the icon, and that means that the program's still running, it's not completely closed. So if I, you know, if I click it again, um, it'll open up obviously quickly and I'm going to close it again. But if you notice when I, when I click the X up here, this, this bar up here is still saying Chrome. If I click the desktop, it goes back to the normal, the normal screen, I guess, um, the normal menu system up here. But if I go back into Chrome, here's the Chrome menu bar. And these features are all, all have to do with Chrome, not have to do with your desktop. They have to do with Chrome now. Even if I close that, you can see it still says Chrome because it's still running down here. So even though I closed the window and you don't want it to still be using resources on your computer, the best thing to do is go up to Chrome and then obviously down, usually it's under the, you know, these, these, these dropdowns are now all have to do with Chrome. They all are Chrome related dropdowns. But if, but the first one always has at the very bottom quit the program. So quit Chrome. And if you notice, this little black dot down here went away because now Chrome is completely closed. So that's the same with almost any program that I use. So again, I'll go into Maps. I'm sorry, <laughs> Safari, I'm sorry. And the same thing. So here I'm in Safari. I opened it up. Now it says Safari. So now th these menu bars have to do with this program. So, you know, if I do File, Share, all, this has to do with Safari, and I'll show you a little bit more about this. I can close it. 
It has a little black dot down here because it has not been fully closed completely. It's still open, but it just got kind of minimized down here even though um, it, it's not really minimized, but it's still running. So basically, you can click on that, but if I really want to close out of it, I just really need to go to Safari and then quit Safari, and that'll close that. And again, once it comes back to Finder and this kind of stuff, you'll see that that's basically um, the, 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 the desktop screen basically, uh, or it's basically the, the computer's menu system. So that's the one you want if nothing's really open. Um, it's going to say Finder, File, Edit, Help. So obviously these are all your programs. Again, like I had mentioned, if you click on Launchpad, um, it's going to open up all your applications. Inside of here there's a couple things that you may want to know about. It's nothing, you know, spectacular or crazy, but um, inside of here on all the Mac OS's, you know, you have Photo booth, if you click on that, you can use your, your video camera to, to take pictures of yourself or to do video. Uh, you usually have a webcam built into Macs, so that's something good to know. I'm not going to get into like mail, contacts, calendar, reminders, notes. Those are things you'll have to kind of fool around with um, and learn yourself, or I'll do it in another video. Um, but we definitely want to go through that eventually. iMovie makes movies, obviously. That's what I'm going to be using to make this one. Um, and I've downloaded some of these other programs, like Writer is a great uh, word processor for the Mac. And then Pages is like their Excel. Um, you know, this is an alarm clock I downloaded. These are some photo uh, things. Keynote's a great um, photo editor as well, or you can create animations from that as well. Here's a voice recorder. So basically, this has a lot of different things. And again, if you want to get out of this, this is called Launchpad. You just click in this other area out here, and it'll go away. Um, if you notice, that, that doesn't stay open. I mean, basically, I don't have to shut it down up here. It just kind of closes. Um, one thing also to note really quickly in here, again, if I click on Launchpad, there's one thing called Other, and if you click on th that one, it opens up a whole bunch of other things in here. And I'm not sure why they're kind of underneath here. Maybe they're not as, you know, they're not as used as, as much or th something like that. But basically, this gives you access to, like, your QuickTime player. Again, you can capture images. Um, what else is in here? Uh, there's a couple things that are important if you're actually doing other things like boot camp um, where you want to run Windows on this machine. Here it is in here. Disk utility helps you um, uh, with disk issues or if you want to run like off of an external OS or something, an external drive on your OS. And uh, But basically you can kind of fool around in here. Um, one thing that, that's kind of interesting in here also is this activity monitor. So if you click on this one, this one actually will bring up all the processes that are running on your system. Uh, it's basically like, you know, very similar to Windows as well. It tells you how much memory is being used. It helps you troubleshoot shoot things. So I can click on memory. I can click on CPU. I can see what, what's using my, the most CPU on my system here. It gives you graphs, um, disk, what's using the most disk, how much resources are being used, and then network. But basically, I'm going to go ahead and again, you can go up to here, close out of this officially by doing this. See how that, that's probably the correct way to do it. Now it's completely gone, and I don't have to worry about that any longer. So that's one thing that's you know obviously good to know. Um, so anyways, down here again is the menu bar, and I think I've gone over that you know obviously quite extensively. If you kind of this is this is your system preferences. So this little icon that looks like a gear is basically the same as if you go to the Apple icon and click on System Preferences up here. So it's just another shortcut of getting there. I'll click on it to show you. It's the same screen we had we had started with a long time ago. Um, so I can go up to System Preferences and quit System Preferences, and it's gone. Um, this little trash bin obviously is what you think it is. If you mouse over it, it'll say trash. I had put something in the trash earlier, so if I click on that. Um, if you drag things into the trash, uh, they won't go away instantly. They'll sit in there. You do have to bring, you know, go into the trash here, and then you can click empty, and it's going to ask you yes. And there it goes. Now the trash can is empty, and you have nothing in your trash. Again, that's very similar to Windows, so just wanted to go over that with you. Um, so the App Store. So basically, if you want to download apps on here as well, there's a couple things you can do here. Um, well, actually, there's, the main thing is, is obviously you can download applications from the browser. So like I can go into Chrome, I can go to Google, I can look up Photoshop, and I can download the, the paid version of Photoshop or something for the Macintosh. And then it goes onto my system. I can in, install that, and it'll run just fine. So I'm going to close out of Chrome here. But if I actually want to go to the App Store, which is their built-in App Store, this this little icon down here that's got the A. I'm going to click on that, and that'll bring up the App Store. And it's very similar to like an Android app store or a Windows app store. You basically can type in what you want up here in the search bar. Um, there's different categories. There's 
top charts, but more or less you can click on, let's say, you know, this is, uh, let's just see what we have here. This is one of the programs I had in there. Um, but let's just say you go down to free down here and you click on see all. Uh, it'll actually load, you know, all the free apps. And if you want to learn a little bit more about an app, for instance, you can click on the title of it and you'll see that it's basically you can click this button here to get it and that'll actually download it right here this is basically how much it, the, the size of it over here some information about it but basically once you download it it'll automatically install it and then once you're done with that um, let me go back here it'll actually go you know like I had mentioned before once you install it it'll go back to your launch pad actually and it'll be sitting in your launch pad to be opened up like if I downloaded this game over here and I downloaded it. If it says get though, it usually doesn't have a cost. Usually the cost is here and I'll show you that in a second. So these are free. It should ask for a password though when you do that. So it should be your Apple password. So let's say I just downloaded this one. It'll actually go into my finder and it'll be an icon in there once it's downloaded and completed. So, and again, once you're in these little windows like this, um, there's like these little arrows here and you can go back and forth. I click back, so I'm back at the, the home screen of the, you know, the app finder, so. So here, I mean, basically it's very straightforward. You know, again, like I said, if you go into the paid version of this stuff, you have to be careful. It's got the prices listed, $49.99, $2.99. And so you click on that and it, you can download it, but it's gonna ask you for your ID, which is tied to a credit card and it'll actually charge you for that. So just be, be careful there. So again, I can minimize this, maximize this, or click this X, but the best way to get out of this, you know, officially is to go up here and just click quit app store. So that's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, and that's basically all you need to know with that. So um, let's see here. What are a couple other things we want to do here? Uh, I guess uh, there's a recent files. If I go into Finder here to open up a file, actually, I'm going to show you a couple things. So for instance, these are a lot of movies that I have here um, that I had made earlier. But if I click on a file and I actually click on the space bar on a file, I don't have to open the file up. Um, it'll Why actually... Is 737 engine so flat? It'll actually open up the movie like it just did and start playing it. As soon as I let go of the space bar, it'll stop doing it. And that's great for opening up like text files and things. You don't, I mean, I don't have a lot of text files here, um, but I have files that basically are just like for a graphic like that. I just clicked on it. it. It doesn't even open. It just basically comes open for a second and goes back and it's not actually opening it up. So it's great for checking files and things like that. So that's just a key thing with the space bar. Just make sure you, you know, you have information on that because I use that all the time. So it's really a good way to do it. Kind of finalize this whole video. I know we're getting kind of long here just to go over the basics though. I'll, I'll try to make some other videos too with some more advanced topics. I forgot to cover how to delete uh, a program. So you can go into Launchpad again. And once you're in Launchpad, let's say you have this this graph, this program over here, this graphics program, you can actually drag it right into the trash bin, which I'm not going to do. And it'll ask you to uninstall it. And you can install a program or delete a program that way. You can do the same with files and things like that as well. So that's how you delete programs. And I guess really the last thing is, again, the main thing to understand is this is how you launch, just clicking on an, an application. Once you're in an application, no matter what it is, this menu bar up here will basically be the menu bar of the application. So we're in Chrome, so these all have to do with Chrome. I'm going to quit that. I guess a better way to do it is, let's say I launch this. Let's say I go into Writer, which is like their, I guess it's like, well, this is actually a little bit different. Um, I'm going to close out of that. I wanted to do Pages. I'm sorry. But if you go into Pages here, this is basically going to be very similar to um, their application for, let me see here, like a Word document and things like that. Um, so I'll click on this. And you notice it looks kind of like Word. But again, since I'm in here, this I, these uh, menu systems up here have to do with Pages. So I can quit out of it, but I can also save page files. I can arrange, view, you know, all that kind of stuff that you would have in Word. So they don't have like the, in Windows, you'll have the actual uh, menu bar uh, like on the program window. It'll be like right here, but on the Apple, it goes, it stays up here. And obviously, you know, in order to close this out, I'll click pages, quit files, and now I'm back, um, back to this menu here. So um, I guess, 
it looks like QuickTime's open too, so I can I'll close out of that in a second as well. Um, but that's it. So basically, I just wanted to show you some basics today. Hopefully, this helps a little bit, and I don't want to keep it too long. Um, and I, you know, totally appreciate uh, you watching the video. And uh, you know, hopefully, you can subscribe to my channel. It's important that I get some subscribers and you know grow the channel. Uh, but if you can do that, that would be great. Just uh, hit subscribe, and I'm going to be making a bunch more of these for you uh, over the next couple months. Thank you very much.